Hello viewers and welcome to this, the Namibian Special Election News Bulletin. I'm Ashley Smith, the news editor of the Namibian. And uh, joining me today in the studio for this uh, very special occasion is uh, Renani Musutua from the Economic and Social Justice Trust. Welcome to you. Thank you for the invite. Excellent. Let, let's just jump right, right into it. Okay. You know, as a community activist, you, you're obviously very, very aware of the daily struggles of, of a large number of Namibians. You know the issues that we're going through in the country at the moment, unemployment, uh, poverty, hunger. Um, bearing that in mind, why, why do you think it's important that people actually go out and vote today? Um, this election is actually really important. Um, if you want to bring change to the, to the local issues, um, that needs to be changed. This is the elections that people should be really participating in because the regional councillors and the local authority councillors are the ones responsible uh, to deliver the services, uh, you know, the municipal services that are needed by the, by the communities. Uh, for example, decent housing, um, uh, proper roads, uh, schools, uh, health facilities and sports and recreational facilities. Um, all those kind of things are actually the responsibility of uh, uh, the local authorities and regional councillors who then get uh, a budget from the national or the central government to make sure that these services are delivered. So this is if you really want to change or bring change um, to whatever is bothering you. These are the people that you have direct links uh, with that you can go directly go to uh, and, and, you know, and express what issues you have in your community and then they are the ones that are supposed to, uh, you know, to uh, rep uh, present your issues to the central government and see you know, how those issues can be sorted out. So this is a very important election. I, I visited a few polling stations here in Wintuk. Uh, you did some observation, um, observer work uh, we discussed earlier. Um, my impression, I can tell you already, that uh, from the early morning voting, from the videos coming in from the regions, people standing in long queues from very early in the morning, uh, seems to be a very, very, very good turnout this year. Yes, um, I was out in the Oshomisa area and I'll be going out again a little bit later when we are done here. Um, the queues remind me of the national and presidential elections actually. It was the same amount of people that have turned up today as they did during the, the national and presidential ex elections. I'm really happy that people are taking these elections really seriously. Yes. Um, the, the turnout, it seems to me that the turnout is going to be really good, much better than the previous year, the two, the, yeah, the previous elections of the lo uh, regional and local. Uh, council's uh, elections, which had really poor turnout. So um, everything has been running smoothly at some uh, uh, some uh, polling stations. Um, there was a polling station in the Oshomise Wilmanbrook uh, open area there where it didn't go really well. They had a power cut yes. uh, and the tent was really small, so it's really crowded. Everything is really cramped up. Yes. Uh, and I don't know how in those kind of conditions you can... Um, you know, um, keep social distancing and correct, stick to the correct, regulations. Correct. Sometimes we forget what, uh, during which time we're voting. It is during the COVID-19 pandemic. That's uh, yeah. obviously still the reality across the world and, and also, of course, here in Namibia. So, so those things are quite important during this election. But also, um, I would have maybe expected that the, the kind of pandemic thing would maybe have an impact on numbers. But it actually looks like Namibians are actually taking, mm. like you're saying, taking this voting day very seriously and and also voting for, for, for what they believe or who they believe can bring the necessary change yeah. to their communities. Yes, people really want change. Uh, I think they want change. Uh, they have choices now, they have many choices. So th I think that's why this time they felt that they can go out and, and, and vote because they've got more, much more choices than they used to have in the past. Yes. Um, yeah. All right, and, and Renani, moving back to uh, turnout. Um, just looking at the kind of uh, initial uh, lines in the morning and the afternoon and the, the faces of voters, um, does the kind of bigger turnout or, you know, the, the traditionally in, 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 this, in this election, local and regional authority, as you mentioned, um, people often fixated with the national and uh, national assembly and presidential election. But this time around, does the kind of bigger turnout in this election, especially among the urban population and the youth, um, does that benefit any particular party or parties in your view? Um, I think IPC will do 
will do really well. Is that uh, Dr. Itulas, uh, Dr. Independent Itulas. Uh, Patriots for Change? Exactly. Okay. You could send the block. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I yes. think this election will do really good for, for, the, for the new kids on the block, the, yes. the new parties. Yes. And, uh, um, and LPM as well, uh, Landless People's Movement, I think will do really well. Um, because um, people really want change, you know. That, yes. That's why you I think that's a choose. recurrent theme yeah. during the election. People want change. Yeah. But change can also mean... Um, if a party puts up a better candidate, for example, that the community knows and the community trusts. Yeah. So it might ne not necessarily just be a negative, for example, for Swapu. If they've actually put up the right candidates in the, in the areas, they could also still uh, retain some support. Yeah. yeah. I think in the, rural, uh, in the rural area, especially in the northern parts of, of, of Namibia, uh, mm. Swapu still has a stronghold. They are yes. traditionally... Uh, um, Loyalist. Yes. Uh, but when it comes to urban areas, Wolfish Bay, Windhoek, you know, where all you also get a lot of youth. I think they might do uh, not so well there because yes. a lot of youth, um, you know, d d I think they are tired of the independence uh, narrative that mainly sort of, of strategy. The liberation struggle, um, credentials. Exactly. That kind of historical, backward looking kind of campaigning exactly. instead of forward looking campaigning. Mm. I think we've picked up a little bit of frustration in the run up. With people saying, you know what I mean, you need to uh, basically uh, stop referring to the history yeah. and tell us what you're going to do now. Exactly. Yes. People want jobs, you know, people want economic development, people want housing, you know, decent housing, all those kind of things. And um, yeah, since, you know, most news are, are, are based in um, urban areas, I think um, that might uh, contribute to swap or loss of votes. Uh, yes. they, they wouldn't be able to dominate... Uh, the regional and local uh, authority councils as, as they used to before. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's, that's definitely going to happen. We, um, yeah. you, I, you can hear it, you know, from people. Yes. Wherever you go, you yes. can hear. Even the people who used to be strong supporters of, of, of the Swapo party are already saying that they are very disappointed with the party and that they're happy that, uh, you know, Itula came along, um, who, you know, put a lot of confidence into other people to, to, mm. to, to run as independent candidates. Yes. Um, now, the independent candidates, I would say, that are, you know, um, um, could also get really good votes because they are from, they are well known in their communities that they are representing. People know them, who they that, are, what they are capable yes. of. Yes. So I think that will contribute to, to uh, some of those independent candidates get, get, getting really good votes as well. Yes, yeah. obviously, because uh, as you say, um, they obviously believe that they have a track record in their communities and that people know them and trust them. And that's why they're on the, on the ballot paper today. Okay. Um, I want to go back a little bit now. We spoke a little bit about SWAPU. We spoke a bit about, a bit about the IPC. But I think um, one of the main themes for me that has not really been explored in the run-up to this election is that kind of basket of SWAPU traditional basket of Swapu votes that's under threat from Dr. Tula's party. Um, it's under threat from the affirmative repositioning movement where, where they are standing as an organization, specifically in Vintuk, Valfus Bay, etc. And of course, from the Landless People's Movement. Now, the, all these different formations actually came, was ripped from the bosom of Swapu. Hmm. So I just wanted to pause a little bit there and, 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 and just kind of uh, take the viewers into the possibilities. If Swapu's vote, for example, gets split in three in certain areas or communities or constituencies, it's also a, an opportunity for other opposition parties to bring out their supporters and actually scoop that, uh, that uh, council seat or that national uh, council seat from... Uh, from the so-called Swapu aligned or the Swapu, uh, former Swapu kind of uh, uh, parties. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I think that, um, yeah, I mean, Swapu spot is diminishing. Uh, the, the obviously, people are leaving yes. and joining either the candidates or the independent candidates or the uh, new upcoming uh, political parties. So obviously, there will be less votes for Swapu. Yeah. And we, we've seen that uh, through the, uh, you know, presidential and national elections That's that uh, Swapo mm -hmm. lost its uh, um, two-third majority it had in the national parliament. Um, well, hopefully, it seems like it. Um, I mean, from my observation, that it, it, might, it could be the same thing that uh, Swapo could lose 
you know, the two-third majority hold that they still have on their on their national council. Okay, you're so jumping the see. gun on my last yeah. question there, but uh, it's fine. No, it's perfect. Because yeah. I'm going to come back to that at the end of, we're going to end off with that kind of watershed moment. Is this a watershed moment? Okay. We saw a bit of a watershed moment last year when, when Swapo lost its two-thirds majority. And of course, the president's uh, uh, vote dropping substantially from from uh, uh, 80%. yeah yeah we had a pretty long discussion before uh, before we actually came to the studio today and one of the the main themes that I think you were actually very very interested in exploring as part of this uh, discussion and, and this bulletin today was the independent candidate phenomena yes um, uh, at the last elections we had five independent uh, candidates uh, this time we have 92. So, which is quite uh, That's a huge. big, big jump. Exactly. Big jump, yeah. Exactly. What, what's happening? Why do you think? Is it because people uh, don't trust traditional parties? Or do I they believe that they stand a better chance of actually being elected in their communities or constituencies if they just campaign on their track record in those communities? Yeah, also that. Uh, but I think this whole thing came about uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, Itula, um, and, yes, we remember, um, yes. Uh, um, yes, and the Emmanuel lady for the Ondangwa. Uh, Angelina, 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 yeah, that came know. very, very close in unseating uh, Swapu in that uh, in that election as well last year. Exactly, yeah. and Nolo Chipinga. I think those are the people that made that open really people's eyes to realize that on, yes. you don't really have to go the to the political route. party to yes. be in politics. Yes. So people realize that, and that has instilled a lot of confidence yeah. uh, into people that they can actually go. Yeah. Go 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 independent, and I think it's also easier than than registering a political party. Uh, you know the process of registration and all that. It's easier to register as an independent candidate, of than, course, of course, uh, than to register a political party. And I also think that some of the people lost in the primaries, and uh, you know they are outcasts and they are not happy about that. Uh, they are tired of the party, uh, you know, politics with its bureaucracy and. Yeah. And factionalism, you know, some people left, uh, feel left out, yes. and then that's when they decide that they're gonna go, uh, you know, independent. Uh, that they would also stand a better chance. Uh, they say, you don't, you know, want to be associated with these political parties that have been um, failing people for the past thirty years. Yes. Uh, um, so they they they're not happy with the party politics. Uh, I think that's why they have decided to go, to go on their own. So, um, yes. Probably those are the main reasons I can I can think of. Adding a bit of vibrancy, more vibrancy to the democratic uh, yes. dispensation in Namibia. Absolutely, you know the political arena has completely changed, which is really good for uh, um, uh, for our democracy. People yes. have more choices. Uh, there are more people, you know, uh, 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 voting probably because of that of the of the several choices that they have. Um, yes, that that's really good for our democracy. That uh, at the end of the day. Probably, you know, the parties that usually used to dominate uh, won't be able to dominate that much because everybody, all the other independent candidates and uh, new uh, political parties are taking uh, yes. votes out of their pots. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, for me, it's, it's it's quite an interesting phenomenon. It's it's quite new for our country, and and obviously, um, it's also for me about kind of people saying, okay, let me let me rather take this political burden onto my own back. I have the capabilities, I have the track record, I, I can make a difference in my community. And I think that, and if, it, and if some of them can pull it off the dirt, it's going to be a, 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 quite, a quite a major achievement to, to defeat traditional and even the nuclear on the block parties uh, at the polls mm. who've had access to, to, to campaigns and, 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 and we, you know what I mean? If, you, if you're an independent candidate, you don't have that pot you can go and scoop from for, mm. for massive campaigning. But... Um, it's been proven in the past that if you run a, a, a proper campaign in your own community, door to door, um, that personal touch is, is, is always important yes, in absolutely. terms of independent candidate, candidate uh, campaigning. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, so Renani, uh, we're actually uh, coming to the end of our, our time together. Uh, I know you, uh, like I said, you jumped the gun a little bit <laughs> earlier with your kind of watershed. And that's exactly the word I used actually when I, when I, when I was framing the question to you. And, and, and the question is as follows, is, is this, Renani, is this a watershed moment in terms of Swapu losing its two-thirds majority in the National Council? That's the first question. Secondly, is it a watershed moment in terms of uh, Swapu perhaps 
losing uh, its footing in uh, major urban areas or urban centers in the country. And finally, I know it's a three-pronged question, but this is the third part. Is the ruling party becoming more and more a rural party? Something similar to what's happening to its sister party in South Africa, the African National Congress. And, of course, in South Africa, uh, analysts have, have, have long been kind of uh, trying to push that tag onto the ANC that the ANC has lost, um, I think, uh, in their last local and regional, they call it local elections, that side, not local and regional. Uh, the ANC lost uh, some big metros, metropolitan areas. I think Johannesburg was lost. Um, Nelson Mandela uh, municipality was lost. Um, Pretoria, Tuane was lost. Are, are we going to see the Swapo also in, in Namibia uh, uh, going that path where, where, where um, urban areas specifically uh, vote for the opposition? Um, yes, um, we, we have to keep in mind that uh, you know, Swapo has an upper hand in um, um, uh, driving its agenda forward because they are in control of the state machinery. That's correct, Obviously, yes. that we should, we should keep in mind. But uh, that didn't change the last election, did it, the national and presidential election. Even though they still had, they had control of the state machinery, they still you know, lost a lot of votes. Uh, but yes, obviously, I think this, this election, people are taking it really seriously because they want change. Um, so it is definitely going to be less votes for, for SWAPO, according to my observations, uh, which might lead to SWAPO losing its two-third majority hold that it still has on the, on the National Council. Uh, that's how I feel things are going to lead to. Um, and obviously, they're going to lose a lot of support in the urban areas. Uh, people in the urban areas are well informed. You know, they've got access to information. Uh, and they are mainly young people as well. Um, Been in many, are, many, many Facebook and Twitter warriors among yeah, the young people as well. So, yeah. Exactly. Mm. Um, so um, they are very disappointed, obviously, with the way things are going in this country. And they are the ones that are going to drive forward the change that I'm sure of. And uh, it looks like they are going to vote for, you know, incoming parties and independent candidates. That's, that's the way it's going to look like. And that's going to make uh, Swapo lose a stronghold uh, on urban areas, of course. Um, uh, yes, um, that's, that's about it, I think. And, uh, of course, we, we might be sitting here in the next few days uh, um, at work, where, I, where you are, at your place of work and my place of work here at the Namibian. And we might be eating humble, humble pie because maybe Swap is going to surprise uh, even its worst detractors. But we'll see what happens in the, in the following days as the results uh, come in. And uh, thank you, <laughs> Renani, so, so much for, for helping me out today. I couldn't have done this without you. And uh, thank you to the viewers for um, joining us and uh, also taking time to, uh, to uh, watch this very special election news bulletin by the Namibian. I'm Ashley Smith, the news editor of the Namibian. Thank you.